right, today we're going to faff about with the afterburner some more. Uh, in this video, I'm going to connect it to the workshop's Wi-Fi and I'll show you on the phone and the laptop all the things you can do when you're connected to it via the Wi-Fi. It's basically all of the things you can do with pressing these five buttons here, but you can do it on a nice big screen and you don't have to click about. Anyway, I'm going to assume that you're not idiots and you can basically work out how to put a triangular plug into a triangular hole and connect up your afterburner to your heater and manage to plug the wires into the back of it. If you fail at this stage, you should probably stop watching because all this is going to go right over your heads if you can't do that bit. Uh, the manual does, uh, the initial please read manual, does have a bit in it where you can leave your original controller, God knows where mine is, the original controller and the afterburner connected together at the same time and it can read the settings out of your controller and apply them to the afterburner. But to be honest, when you see in the next stage how easy it is to bang those settings in, you're just going to want to throw your old controller away and use the afterburner and then just put in the settings that were in your afterburner. Obviously, you should go and write down what your settings were, you know, 1.2 hertz at 1500 RPM for low and 4 hertz and 4,500 RPM for high. But of course, you're going to tune it later anyway with your carbon monoxide meter, carbon monoxide meter near your exhaust to get a nice low carbon monoxide emission so you know you've got a nice clean burn, etc, etc. There's other videos on that. Okay, now it's plugged in and powered up. You put all your heater back together. It will go and connect it to the Wi-Fi so that you can fuck about with it on your phone and not have to press the little buttons. You can do it on your phone. As you can see, I have it nicely mounted in my uh, diesel heater case here. Bit of help with the angle grinder and away we went. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this. So we want to go to system settings and along a bit to where it says Wi-Fi settings and then we'll go up. Uh, yours will probably be on, I think it's got config and AP. We basically want uh, everything. Uh, we'll go for config, SDA and the access point, because the access point is the important bit. And we'll set that. I think mine's already set as that. So it's going to restart. In case anyone's interested, if you disable the, the, the Wi-Fi, it uses 100 milliamps of power less than with the Wi-Fi running. Just in case anyone's curious. Sitting here idly, uh, what's the display says, 200 milliamps it is currently drawing. 200 milliamps, right, okay. So we have the Wi-Fi here, and if you go back into heater settings, system settings, scroll along a bit. Can you see on there where it says AP access point 192.168.4.1? That is the address of this. It is now making its own Wi-Fi, as shown by, let me zoom out a little bit, withdraw. Can you see on my phone? Yes. Right, okay. So I'll go into your, well, phone, or I'll show you the laptop as well. But go into your phone, go into your oh, Wi-Fi, you still see. Hi. Oh, wait, let me just exit this. Uh, no, that's it. Afterburner. Go on, afterburner. Well, configure the Wi-Fi. Right, mine is the workshop, because it is the workshop. I will now enter my password. Mm. I think I got that. It will now reboot again with the network settings. It's good at fast, I mean, it's fast at booting. I like that. Start Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi server. She should be up and running. Give it a moment, and then I shall refresh my phone to search for... Oh no, I don't need search, because this is now connected to... <coughs> Sorry. This is now connected to the network in here. So if we went into 
the Wi-Fi, not the Wi-Fi settings, the heater set, system settings, Jesus Christ, system settings, and you see the other one, 10.0.0.126, so if I go into my internet browser, please don't be Pornhub, hooray, 10.0.0.126, it takes us to the afterburner menu, eventually. Oh, look at that, look at all those things. And it knows it is, well, it's not on, obviously, because it's not on, but here you can tune and uh, adjust all of the things. Uh, you know, like all the system settings, oh, missed, I said system functions there. So there's literally all the things you can do on the Afterburner menu. I'm now using the wrong hand. Uh, all the things you can do in this little control panel, you can do on your phone. Including turning turning on and turning off the heater, starting, stopping, adjusting temperature, etc, etc, etc. And thankfully, there was a thing for, you don't have to go in here set the clock manually, you can just press update time and it updates the afterburner with the date and time that's on your phone. It's fucking brilliant. So, for lo those were asked, people were asking what it does differently. That's all of its modes of controlling the temperature, as opposed to the original diesel heater, which just ran at maximum power, got to its temperature, got to minimum. The afterburner can do better than that. It can try and stay an, an even keel and try and keep the temperature there or thereabouts. Or it does have the option of actually running at full power, up to temperature, and then turning off. And then when the temperature comes back down again, it fires back up again. Obviously, this will ruin, not ruin, ruin's the wrong word. It'll use a lot more power because it has to go through a full start up and stop cycle every time. And frost mode's in there as well, which turns the heater on at temperature. No matter what status it's in, if you've turned it off, I mean, I'll turn it back on anyway. You can adjust all the pump and fan speed settings from in here and save them the afterburner that way. But uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, th this is, this is good. so that, that is it connected via my home Wi-Fi, so I could go anywhere in the house and connect it. But it does have another option. Let us go in and go back into system settings. System settings, and go along, uh, change the mode. It does have, oh sorry, access point is running. So let me go back to, this one. Is my finger gone numb? Anyway, that, no, right. Back in there. And we will then choose, come on, phone. We'll connect to the afterburner itself. We have connected to the afterburner, allegedly. To, what was its address? Come on now, shout out, shout out loud. 192.168.4.1. One nine two one six eight four dot one. Baff! We have the same settings as we saw previously, but we're now directly connected to the afterburner. It's it's generating its own magical Wi-Fi network, and we have connected directly to it. So you can connect either or, either via your own network address inside your network. So you can do it from in your house or or anywhere you have your own internet access, or you can connect to it directly. Neither, either, 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 other. What I mean is, let's say if you're in your van and you've obviously not got the internet, well, you maybe don't have the internet in your van, you can still turn on its own access point and control it from your phone that way. Uh, or via Bluetooth if you've got Android, but the Bluetooth app isn't as good as controlling it from the Wi-Fi interface. Uh, right, okay, well, we can disconnect from that network and go back onto the normal network. Please. Oh, come on, we're standing next to the router. It's there, it's fucking right there. Yes, please go back to the workshop. Smashing, okay. Uh, right, that's, that's, you've done it via your phone, you're now connected via Wi-Fi and you can fucking fiddle about with all of the settings via your phone or your browser, which we'll go and look at it on the computer as well. Well, hey, we're here, we might as well.
Okay, here it is running on my trusty laptop. Same web address. Well, it's the Intel network. The only... Uh, it's not a problem per se I found on running on the laptop is that depending on the size of your screen and your resolution, the menu disappears off lower than uh, the screen goes and the scroll doesn't work, but that's an easy problem to fix. All you do is change the size of the window and it lets you... It's not so bad on this on the laptop, but it shows the full thing, but on my bigger monitor in the house it misses out the bottom of the menu. But let's say everything you can do via the controls on the on the afterburner itself, you can do in here. And one day we'll eventually set up the MQTT broker so that we can control it from anywhere on the planet. Now, why did I go back? Why go that way? As you can see, right, it's there. So I, I was confused at first uh, when I fired this up. As you can see, there's only up and down. There's no start and stop or anything like that on the page it's on this bod heater body here yourself if you click it or tap it on your phone it brings up this dialogue when you want to turn the heater on off well you can only turn it on because it's off or cancel it i don't think this will turn on because my temperature is currently above yeah so it won't turn on because the temperature is well it's currently 19.2 degrees in here, I've got it set to 17, so it will not turn on, for it is already too hot. The other thing a lot of you were asking about was how the afterburner controls the temperature better than the normal heater. So the afterburner has four inbuilt thermostat modes. Standard, which just operates the same way that the normal heater <coughs> would have done, in which it runs at maximum, to get to temperature and then runs at minimum until the temperature falls by x degrees i think it's one degree uh and it also i think i don't know what it's the actual range is it probably says in here somewhere if i read it and then back up to maximum power back down to minimum so that's standard uh, the second mode is dead band mode which is a modified hysteresis basically you can set a wider gap for where the heater will run up and run down in so you maybe set it at five degrees so if you set it to 20 it'll run up to it'll try and no oh, how does that work it goes to 25 and then shuts off and then it comes back down ah uh, anyway. yeah you know but it's better than the stock heater you can read all of these in the manual yourself just literally go and download the manual and then this is probably the most useful one i think is the linear hertz so if you set it to a temperature, the afterburner will slowly increase and decrease the fan speed and fuel pump to try and maintain this temperature so it won't run up at maximum, down at minimum, max and minimum. It'll try and keep an even in the middle, you know, it'll do its best to maintain a temperature. And the other one is just the start and stop where it gets the temperature, turns off, goes below that temperature, turns back on again. And... Uh, as I said, frost mode is frost mode, surprisingly. And then there's other 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 settings like yeah that I don't need to know because that's two other frost mode. Here we go, frost mode. So like in frost mode it'll come on at four degrees and go back off at eight degrees. Which is good if you are trying to not let the inside of your van freeze, I suppose. The workshop doesn't really matter. Right, I suppose we should have a gratuitous starting up of the heater. Anyway, right, so we, first of all we have to turn the temperature way up. Well, set it to 21. It's currently 19.9 .9 in here. So I will now tap on the thing. So I'll turn here on. Oh look, starting. Preheat. Alright, can you see on my phone as well? Fan speed, obviously it'll show fuel pump, etc, etc, and the body temperature. Body temperature is the heater housing temperature, you know, the thermostat that sits on top of the heater. That's what that one is. Uh, if you can see at the top there, you see low plug, voltage, current, and power, which is uh, quite interesting, if you're interested in those sort of things. But that's it, so I've set it to... Well, I'm now controlling it via my phone. Ta-da! That was a thing.
obviously you can stop it and turn the temperature up and down from here and control all the settings as we saw before. Right, while this fires up in the background, just let it do its thing. Uh, what else afterburner things do you want to see? I know this was a very, very basic and very short, not very short, but short video in the, the basic setting it up and having the Wi-Fi and controlling it from your phone. So let me know in the comments if there is even anything else you want to see on this. And I'll try my best to do it. Thanks for watching.